Last week, if you recall, we touched on a recent essay written by Sam Altman. It's titled Reflections. In it, he made some really striking predictions about AI. So this week, we wanted to actually expand on our discussion of that essay since we only touched on it briefly last week. And then we also wanted to mix in some other comments Sam made to Bloomberg this past week in a new interview. So first, in reflection, Sam revealed that OpenAI is now, quote, confident they know how to build AGI. He also said that because of this, the company is now looking beyond traditional AGI towards what he calls, quote, super intelligence in the true sense of the word. He basically believes super intelligent AI could dramatically accelerate scientific discovery and innovation beyond current human capabilities. He also predicts in this essay that we'll start to see the seeds of all of this kind of come together starting this year. He has repeated a couple of times now, both with Bloomberg and in this essay, that we're going to maybe see the first AI agents join the workforce and materially change how companies operate starting this year. In Reflections, he acknowledged that these kind of predictions about super intelligence sound like science fiction to a lot of people. And he writes, quote, that's all right. We've been there before and we're okay with being there again. We're pretty confident that in the next few years, everyone will see what we see. So in a new interview with Bloomberg, he echoed a lot of these talking points. He talked up how the company's O3 model achieved a major breakthrough by passing the ARC-AGI challenge. He repeated the prediction that 2025 is when we might see true AI agents join the workforce. And not to mention, he talked a bit about his feud with Elon Musk and his controversial million-dollar donation to President-elect Donald Trump's inauguration fund. So, Paul, we're going to take a couple pieces of this one by one. And first up, like, I'll be honest, like, it is crazy to me that we have gone so quickly from even speculating whether or not AGI is even possible to Altman himself saying, basically, yeah, we know how to build it. He even went so far as to say in this Bloomberg interview, quote, it's impossible to overstate how non-mainstream AGI was way back in 2014, right before they started OpenAI. He said, people were afraid to talk to me because I was saying I wanted to start an AGI effort. It was like cancelable. It could ruin your career. So what changed? Yeah, it, you know, we've obviously been covering this topic all, uh, along the way. Um, I think the models have gotten smarter. That's changed. Uh, there's been a lot more reports put out, uh, valuations done on the AGI spectrum, trying to assess kind of where we are. And so I think it's just become more commonplace. Um, and I think the labs are just talking about it more. And it, I thought it was really funny how this interview started. The OpenAI PR team obviously wants Sam out in front telling the story for some reason, because the reporter literally says in the article, your team suggested this would be a good moment to review the past two years. Having spent a time in the PR world, that is a reporter or that is a PR person reaching out to a reporter and saying, hey, Sam is available to talk. We think now is a good time to regroup this. And the reporter saying, OK, yeah, I'll tell the story you want told, but I'm also going to ask him all this other stuff while we're doing it. That's, but it, I've never actually seen a reporter actually write that up front and say that's why this interview is happening. And they're um, probably in the room or on the phone. Oh, with... there's three PR people in the room. Yeah. Like, trust me, <laughs> you and I have done this before. Um, so I don't know, like, in, it, I thought it was really interesting to go back to like the AGI not being sort of like taboo to talk about. He kicks off the interview talking about how they recruited so much talent, like a density of like the best AI researchers in the world in those early days. And he said the pitch was just come build AGI. And the reason it worked, mm. and he the quote, I cannot overstate how heretical it's heretical. It was at the time to say, we're going to build AGI. So you filter out 99% of the world and you only get the really talented original thinkers. And that's really powerful. So then, you know, his reflections post again, we, we talked about it a little bit last week, but we didn't go into this Bloomberg article much. And there is just a lot of really interesting things in there. He, he retells the story of like his early dinners with Ilya and some of the formation of open AI. And so if you haven't like heard the story of the early days of open AI, this is a reasonable representation of it. Like I would read Genius Makers by Cade Metz too, that tells more of the story. Um, but so the dinners with Ilya Sutskova, who was one of the co-founders and now has safe super intelligence. He tells about taking over as CEO in 2019. He talks about the launch of ChatGPT, says, quote, 
I thought it was going to do pretty well. The rest of the company was like, why are you making us launch this? It's a bad decision. It's not ready. And then he said, I don't make a lot of, we're going to do this thing decisions, but this was one of them. I actually, I think that's an interesting moment just from a leadership perspective as the CEO and founder of multiple companies through the years, there is this fine balance sometimes as a leader where you do get committee thinking, like you involve people in it. And then sometimes as a leader, you have, you have to trust your instinct and your vision and you have to just do something. And so I thought this was an interesting moment because we will have, you know, books in business classes for years that will look back on the origins of open AI and how it was all done and the decisions that were made. And so it was kind of cool to like hear that little bit of, of insight. He talks about the company structure, his firing. He does get into the thoughts on AGI. I find this kind of frustrating, honestly, like the way he talks about AGI, it kind of drives me nuts because hmm. they're the ones that have been pushing this concept, literally their mission statement since 2015. <laughs> and what is AGI? Well, when you ask Sam, this is the answer we get. Quote, I think AGI has become a very sloppy term. If you look at our levels, our five levels, you find people that would call each of those AGI. And the hope of the levels is to have some more specific grounding on where we are and kind of the progress is where it's going rather than is it AGI or is it not AGI? So then the reporter says, well, what's the threshold where you're going to say, okay, we've got AGI now. Again, I would think OpenAI could answer this question. They've been asked a thousand times. Um, so he said, the very rough way I try to think about it is when an AI system can do what very skilled humans in important jobs can do. I'd call that AGI. Then there's a bunch of follow-on questions like, is it a full-time job or part-time? Can it start as a computer program? Decide? And it just kind of goes into like, Bleh. and then yeah. and then it says, now we're going to move the goalpost always, which is why this is hard. I'll, I'll stick with that as an answer. It's like, stick with what as an answer? But I, I, so, I, so I guess, if I go back to this, uh, he is currently defining AI as a system that, can, or AGI is a system that can do what very skilled humans in important jobs can do which is not a great definition, but that is the definition that we are going with. Um, there was also insight into the pricing of ChatGPT, which I thought was fascinating. He said, we tested two prices, 20 and 42, 42 being the Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm fairly confident they picked 42 <laughs> for that reason. Um, but he said, people thought 42 was a little too much. They were happy to pay 20, so we picked 20. Okay. <laughs> and he, he said, it was not a rigorous hire someone and do a pricing study thing. Yeah, for all you data-driven startups out there, sometimes yes. people are just making it up. This is how decisions are made. It's how brand names are picked. It's how pricing models are picked. Uh, he gets into AI safety, roadblocks to progress, um, which I think their economic blueprint they published today probably is tied to this. Uh, but he does say a lot about like their work in chip building and developing their own chips, and they're going to have more to say on this year. Fusion, he talks about being a huge thing, nuclear fusion and the need to reduce uh, regulations around that because that'll help accelerate um, energy in the United States in particular. The Trump thing, uh, he made a personal donation and the reporter called him out on that. Like, you don't share a lot of common beliefs with Trump. Like, why would you make a personal donation? And he said, I don't support everything Trump does or says. I don't support everything that Biden does or says, but I do support the United States of America. And I'll work to agree I'm able to with any president for the good of the country. I actually thought that was a really good answer. Like I, I thought it's like, okay, I could respect that answer. Um, I think AGI will probably get developed during this president's term and getting that right seems really important supporting the inauguration. I think that's a relatively small thing. So basically he's saying like the, the greater reason here is like, we, we just have to do this together. Like it's mm -hmm. in a very important time. Gets into Elon Musk, gets into US infrastructure and the need for that to be the focus of this current administration. So. The, uh, you know, I would definitely read Sam's personal reflections post because it came as a result of this interview. The the guy said, like, you, you've, you you know, written before. Why haven't you written in a while kind of thing? And so he wrote the reflections post as a result of this interview. And then the interview itself does cover, you know, quite a bit of topics. It's a, it's a good read in Bloomberg. His waffling on AGI seems really strange to me since literally in reflections, he says... I think we know, we're confident we know how to build it. Like, wouldn't that... But we don't know what it is. ...assume a definition? Yeah. I, it yeah. drives me nuts, uh, the whole... Uh, one last note here, like, just very quickly, like, how confident are, are you in his... You know, he keeps talking up these agent predictions. We're going to talk in a few topics about some delays on the agentic front at OpenAI. Like, how mm. confident are you that they're going to be joining the workforce and kind of changing how companies operate starting this year? 
I, th I think they will within AI research lab companies and frontier companies. Mm -hmm. I think that th they're going to be heavily, uh, heavy human in the loop. They're not going to be like the autonomous AI agents that everyone envisions. Um, but we talked about that on a recent episode with, you know, the state of AI agents, it's humans train them, humans figure out the data, humans do the integrations. They set, you know, the work of the AI to kind of create what the workflow is going to be. The AI executes the workflow, the human oversees it to make sure it doesn't screw up or get access to something it's not supposed to get access to. Human helps improve it. Like, I think there's going to be just be a lot of human in the loop, but you're going to be building a ton of these agents with formerly known as bots, but now calling them agents that carry out a string of, of tasks. Um, and so I, I do think that those are going to start to make an impact in, in some of these businesses. I just, I don't think they're going to be as autonomous or as reliable as maybe they're perceived to be.